Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're taking a look at the Flux macro extension for Hyen. Here it is. It's a wavetable based macro uh, with quite a heavy leaning towards the uh, arpeggiated kind of sound. I'll give you an example of one of the presets. This is the Euphoria preset. It's not a trivial thing to make Hallian a little bit prettier. I mean, let's face it, it's an extremely bland interface. And these macros really kind of help give it some character. And the Flux uh, expansion is a particularly good one. I've chosen this particular preset today because I think it really demonstrates some of the, the hidden features of Flux. It's always worth bearing in mind that almost everything that you see in a macro can be accessed from Hallian from one uh, perspective or another. But that really doesn't change the fact that putting a good skin on these things, making them more user-friendly, uh, user is a really big deal. So let's break down this preset today and I'll show you as we go uh, how the various components hang together. Primarily, Flux is a dual wavetable oscillator-based synthesizer. You can see the two wavetables in the primary interface. So I've got the oscillator tab selected here. I'm going to disengage oscillator 2. I'm also going to turn this sub off and we're going to come back to this sub. There's a lot to talk about uh, in this episode about the sub. Okay, so let's just listen to the uh, oscillator 1 for now. So a couple of things to note. Obviously there's some sort of arpeggio going on there. So we're going to infer that there's a flex Fraser connection underneath, underneath the hood and I'll prove that in a moment. But the other thing that I want to draw your attention to is that this is a very dynamic sound. There's a lot going on. And you can see from the wavetable interface that there's obviously a lot of motion in the wavetable itself. Even after I let the key go, you know, there's quite a lot of activity there. Another thing that's worth noting about this interface is that the level of the oscillator is set to zero. So we've clearly got quite a bit of modulation going on because if this level control isn't being modulated from somewhere else, we're never going to hear it. Let's jump over to the mod tab and see what's going on. So we've got 16 modulation slots. Again, Hallian has many more than 16. It's one of those kind of skin based things. The first 16 slots in the modulation matrix are assigned to the flux macro. And if we jump over behind the scenes, you can see here is the modulation matrix. Ignore these for now from 17 onwards. There's, there's a conversation to be had there. But these first 16 entries map directly to what you see in Flux. And sure enough, we've got all sorts of connections into the wavetable, including wavetable level. So this is where we're primarily getting our sound from. Let's have a quick look at this mod 5 entry and try to understand a little bit more about what's going on. At the bottom of the interface, we have two sets of sliders representing envelopes. These are the filter and amplitude envelopes that behind the scenes are fully featured multi-point envelopes. A lot of that confusion has been basically masked out and we're back to simple ADSR envelopes. The wavetable one level, which as we saw in the oscillator is set to zero, is being modulated by two different envelopes, primarily the amplitude envelope. But as you can see, that has a non-zero sustain. If I hold the key down, eventually the note does actually fade away completely. And the reason why we're getting that is because we've got a secondary modulation coming from the filter envelope. So the filter envelope, which does have a sustain level of zero, is being used as a mask, as a modulator on top of a modulator. So these two envelopes are being stacked together. All of that sums to sound. We hear the sound as the envelopes are open, but ultimately those gates are going to close and each of the sounds is going to get pinched off. But we're not done there with the story of Oscillator 1. It is quite a fascinating story it has to tell. And in order to really understand it, we have to look at the arpeggiator, otherwise known in Hallian terms, obviously, as the Flex Fraser. Let's just have a quick look at the program tree. Here's the Flex Fraser. And if we look at that in the sound tab of the edit screen, and you can see three elongated notes with some shorter ones in between. Obviously, there's a one for one equivalence there. So this is the primary sequence that's being played. I'm just going to hold a key down and we'll listen to it as the Flex Fraser plays along. Something really interesting is going on there. You're only hearing three notes. These three longer notes are sounding, but none of the shorter ones in between can be heard. Just to prove that there are actually notes being played, let's listen to Oscillator 2 instead. 
So where on earth are those other notes being uh, being taken away from? Well, this is one of the nice features of Flux, one of the baked in aspects of the macro and why, I've, why I'm drawing your attention to it. C1, 2 and 3 are basically controller lanes in the Flex Fraser, allowing you to apply programmed modulation to the, to the arpeggio or sequence in this case as, as it's being played. It's interesting it's called an arpeggiator, isn't it? It's quite clearly a sequencer. So when we jump over to C1, you get a good clue as to what's going on. We've got some modulation bars that correspond to uh, modulation of the wavetable one level. So the arpeggiator is suppressing the level of wavetable one for most of the time of the sequence. In fact, we're only getting those long notes. Now, ever the curious soul, I want to know how that maps in Hallion. So if we jump back over to the edit screen, and over to the modulation matrix. Go back down and have a look at those modulation entries that I told you to kind of ignore for the moment. Entries 17, 18, and 19, exactly 17, 18, and 19, map into the three controller lanes of what's, what Flux calls the arpeggiator. And here we have CC110, which is just an unused MIDI CC slot. There's nothing special about controller uh, continuous controller 110 not usually used for any other reason. In this particular case, it's being mapped into wavetable one level. So whatever the macro does with this C1 lane is being used to suppress the volume of oscillator one for this period of time. Now, these three controller lanes in Flux are dynamic. As you can see, I can choose the destination. Any basically legal destination in Flux is perfectly reasonable. So they're not intrinsically tied to wavetable level. That's just what this particular preset's doing, and it's doing it really nicely. So oscillator one and oscillator two together, you get those sharp kind of noise-laden hits from oscillator one, and then oscillator two plays the sequence in the background. Let's just listen to those two. Really nice preset design, but a really nice illustration of how Flux works and the value of having these skins on top of what would otherwise be quite a complex kind of um, modulation setup. All of this stuff is given you for free. This is really what you're getting when you install an instance of Flux. These pre-wired connections are the good stuff. The next thing I want to draw to your attention is modulation entry number three. So we've got N3, I'll have to figure out what that is in a minute, and that's being mapped to wavetable one pitch. So I'll just solo wavetable one or oscillator one so that we can try to identify what this pitched sound is sounding like. Can you hear that the sound is much flatter? It's much, much flatter when envelope three is disengaged. So it's modulating the wavetable one pitch. It's a quite a brief um, sharp sound, but it's not to say it's not significant. It is having an effect on sculpting, you know, that sound. So let's have a look at what envelope three is doing. It's got its own tab. This is actually the user envelope in Hallion. Let's have a quick jump over there. Here it is in the envelope section. We have a dedicated user envelope. The user envelope itself is flat which basically gives the macro free reign to do whatever it wants with it. And what we effectively have is an elongated kind of multi-point ADSR. So if you think about a tr traditional ADSR, you can see those letters. We've got some markers that allow us to specify non-zero or non-maximum levels, where ordinarily those levels would be zero or maximum. When this envelope starts, it doesn't have to start at zero, which many ADSR envelopes do. do. It can start at any level it wants. When it gets to the end of its attack phase, it doesn't have to finish at the, at the maximum level. Uh, L1 is gonna specify at the end of the attack phase. And then once the release phase has completed, what do we release down to? Do we release down to zero, which most release cycles do, or some non-zero value? So it's really just stretching out the concept of the ADSR envelope, making it a little bit more flexible. And as you can see, that envelope has been mapped to wavetable one pitch. This is where the pitch modulation is coming from. I've made so many changes to this preset, actually. I'm just going to throw it away. 
so that you and I can both talk the same language. If I press a, a key, you know exactly what's going on. The next feature I want to have a look at is the sub and noise options. So I'm going to disengage the two oscillators. So in the sub tab, we have access to both the sub oscillator and the noise oscillator. Once again, these are standard features of any zone. We have two oscillators and then in the sub zone, here's the sub oscillator and the noise um, component. In the particular preset that I've loaded up here, Euphoria, only the sub is activated, but when I press a key, you're not going to hear it. Now, when I was deconstructing this preset, it took me quite a while to figure out why I wasn't hearing anything until I realized it was actually mapped into the arpeggiator. If we jump over to the arpeggiator tab and go to C3, you can see the wavetable sublevel is mapped here. Let's have a quick look in Halion as well. I'm trying to show you as many different perspectives as possible. If you jump back between these screens, and I'm, I'm sorry if it's a little bit too fast, I'm so used to using Halley and I have to sometimes kind of just slow down. It's really useful to jump between different perspectives and see what's going on. So here's Halley and behind the scenes. Here's matrix entry 19, an irrelevant CC number. It happens to be 112, but it's mapped to wavetable sublevel. So whatever this CC value is doing, it's doing it maximally. You can see that it's set the modulation depth is set to 100. In the arpeggiator, all of the lanes assigned to C3 are empty. They're basically set to zero. So I'll hold that key down again. You can see the arpeggio, the sequence playing in the background, but you're not hearing any sound. If I introduce volume using the step controller, there it is. So I get to, I get to individually determine the volume of the sub oscillator on this preset. Now, interestingly, I'm not altogether sure why the preset's been designed with no sub-oscillator involved at all. If I just load it again from disk, the sub is on. It looks like it's supposed to be making noise, and this is what confused me initially. When I soloed it to just listen to the sub, you can see I've got the key pressed down here. You don't hear anything even though the level's turned up. So it's just another perspective to look at Flux from and think, what is it doing? It's taking this functionality from Halion, it's baking it into this wavetable based kind of sequence oriented interface, and it's making a lot of these connections for you. When you jump over to the modulation matrix, you don't see any of this. You, see, you only see the first 16 entries, 17, 18, and 19 are kind of hidden. They are there behind the scenes if you go looking for them, but you don't need to know that level of detail kind of intrinsically, all you need to know is when you jump over to the arpeggio, uh, the arpeggiator, what are you seeing in this selection? You can see the destination is set to wavetable sublevel. Final thing I'll mention about Flux is the LFO connection. So we have two LFOs and you can see LFOs A and B are in use in this preset. We jump over to the modulation matrix. You can see here LFO A is doing work, wavetable position, wavetable pitch. We've got wavetable two position, anything else? Yeah, LFOs A and B are doing a lot of work. They're not the internal LFOs. LFOs one and two, which are Hallian's kind of baked in LFOs, they're available to every preset. They're not actually being used in Flux. In the program tree, we have dedicated LFO A and B MIDI modules, and these are the modules that are actually being used by Flux. If I change LFO A, to a sawtooth and we jump over to flux there we go lfoa is now a sawtooth just another little one of those things that can initially trip you up when you first come to look at the macro you're trying to figure out how it connects into halion hopefully that will help to make a little bit more sense of it and i hope you enjoyed the video that's all for today please hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already helps my channel out i'll see you next time thanks very much